It's the Wayne County Football Show with Marshall Wood and head football coach Jack Hankins. Brought to you by Extreme Guns, Alpha Insurance, Boondock Eddies, Circle C Tractor, and First State Bank. All the information you need for Wayne County football. Welcome to Wayne County High School War Eagle Football, folks. I'm Marshall Woods sitting here with the top bird, Coach Jack Hankins. Coach, thanks time for thanks for taking time to talk to us a little bit about War Eagle Football. The nation enjoys it, and uh, the show has a pretty good following beyond the boundaries of Wayne County. So we talk a we talk a lot of stuff, and uh, want to know you're not giving away any secrets. It's going to come back to bite us, are you? I don't think so. <laughs> I, when we do, we'll have to pump the brakes on some of those. <laughs> You know, one thing that's certainly no secret to boards, administrators, principals, and coaches is the cost of the game. I want to spend a little time <clears throat> talking about that uh, very thing, but before we do, I want to point out that we're not talking Wayne County specific here. We're referring to in general, uh, in a general fashion with reference to information that we've, that Coach Hankins knows through personal experience and I've found on the internet. You know, and, and we've we've looked into this, and we know these numbers are pretty close to any high school football program in the country. Do you agree with that, Coach? I agree 100 percent. Absolutely. You know, it's amazing at the at, at what it costs, and I think a lot of our people are going to be are going to be surprised as to this. But you know, and, and but another factor that I was thinking about this morning. You know, we're a 5A school. We we're are. a pretty good sized school. Mm -hmm. But the cost of the game is the same for a 1A as it is a 6 or a 7A per player. When you get down to per, actually, yes, get per on the player field. it would be per player it would be. We would have a little more cost incurred just from a five A program standpoint, from from travel and expense as far as feeding the guys and when you go on a way trip and things like that would be more costly for us. You know, of course, you know, just common sense. It's easier to feed thirty players than it is you know a, a group traveling with seventy five or eighty five or ninety or hundred players. You yeah, know, so yeah. you're you're right. Cost per player. But when you get to traveling with those guys and having to feed everybody, and, and you want to do that, because there's no telling what time you get home from an away game, you know, mm -hmm. and these guys live on the outskirts. So, a absolutely, cost of the game is, uh, I'm going to tell you, it's one of our biggest burdens. I know it's one of the biggest burdens for everybody, really since, you know, the the two COVID years and, you know, gate revenue, Marshall, and, and we'll get into that, but, you know, the only way – we really can pay for everything is from our gate revenue. Yeah. That and any fundraisers we do. Yeah. Um, but gate revenue has been down here. Yeah. You know, and but it's not just here, it's been down everywhere. You know, several years ago, this trend started some time back and I mean it was really mm -hmm. it was really went to another degree when, when COVID popped up. But I I can remember, you know, and, and Wayne County Faithful will remember, you know, Back through the first ten years of, of this century, you know, crowds, people going everywhere. About 2011, 2012, you know, I was talking to some coaches that had been here and moved on. They said, "Well, it's not just there; it's right. everywhere. It is everywhere." You You're know, exactly so right. it's a sign of the times. But mm -hmm. I do want to hit this first. Now, we're going to be okay. talking about the cost of the game, coach, from a from your player standpoint, and what it okay. takes to get your players on the field, and that pretty much is what comes through the athletic budget. But now, before we touch this, we're looking at facilities. Mm -hmm. Now, the facilities at any place, field houses, fields. The football teams don't pay for those things. Those things are paid for by the administration. I mean, you know, a football team's not going to be able to raise the kind of money that we're going to talk about here to get a, get a player on the field and spend on a, a millions of dollars on fields and, and, and on, on infrastructure. No, that's right. Your infrastructure, though, that comes from your city, your, your central boards, from yeah. your, you know, from your – or if you got a county system, your county office, wherever that is. And, you know, it – and, that, and that's all generated too. A lot of it tax-based money and, and money you get for capital improvement and things mm -hmm. like that. I know with education, sometimes it's easy to throw. Well, why don't you just do this or do that? And I know in education, there, there's specific pots of money that you can only be spent in certain places. Mm -hmm. You know, and I know that makes it hard, and most people don't really understand that. But but you're exactly right. Like the facilities and the housing and, and the places you play. That's all done through the central offices right. of, of all these schools, whether it be city school, county schools, right. and, and things like that. The, the administration handles that part of it. Um, right. You know, the, the per player stuff that we're going to get into in just a second, that's really what we come in, and we handle that expenditure there. Yeah. Well, let's kind of turn our attention to dollars and cents and break it down a bit. We're starting with equipment, Coach. Uh, I'm just going to kind of sit here and we'll look at, we'll look at, uh, we'll look at a, just a general cost 
of, of what it costs to put a player on the field, and then we'll kind of break it down a little bit more. But mm-hmm. talk to us a little bit about cost and things that we have to deal with. Okay, well, um, you know, you had mentioned we had talked before, Marshall, about there's been a, a ballpark figure thrown out about how much it costs per player. If you count, when you equip that player from head to toe and he runs out there and we run out there to play our first game, whoever it's going to be, or Marshall, you're looking at approximately $1,000 per player. That's what you're looking at per player. So you can do that times 60 or times 75 or as we got 100 players right now. That's $100,000. I mean, you've got <laughs> uh, there, there are some – there are some costs that, um, man, you – and here's the thing. You can't neglect these costs. So so if, if your son plays for us, you ought to know he's going to have a football helmet that's certified by law that has to be yeah. recertified every year and that's going to be and, and meet what they call all these – Marshall, no helmet is – and I know this, this show's not about concussions. I don't want to get – but no helmet is concussion proof. But they've all been tested and rated, and, and we put our guys in five star rated helmets. You know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? And, and Rydell's, you know, and Shuts, your, your main two helmet manufacturers. Mm-hmm. There's others that's come on the market now, but they've been proven to, to give you the five star rated helmet. And Marshall, you're looking at helmet um, cost, I mean, minimum $350 to $500 a helmet. Mm. You can get some junior high helmets for around two fifty. Um, but the helmets we wear, and which we're, is wearing in college, you know, the Rydell's got the Speed, the Speed Flex. That's the name of them. You know, the, those helmets are very expensive. Mm-hmm. And what you try to do is you try to buy them after the season. And um, we're blessed here, our, and we, we 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 had some help with a lot of our. We had to buy twenty four new helmets this year. Because we had so many rejected, we'll talk about that in just a second. Okay. But, but that's the best time to buy them. You can get them on sale. Sometimes the Rydell and the big helmet companies, they'll if you buy twelve, you might get two free. And let me tell you, you put all that pot together, and you're buying twelve or twenty four helmets, and get. Let me tell you, it's not a lot you're getting free, but you do get a little bit of break yeah. on that. Helmets yeah. are expensive. Costs have come down from a few years ago, but they're still extremely high, mm. and there's no way around that. And you wouldn't want to come out here and you won't want me to put your son in a helmet that's, that's not a, a good, well-rated helmet that's supposed to be, you know, to help you all you can get help with, you yeah. know, as far as hitting. And uh, let me tell you, that that's a big deal. You know, I, I look at it just from a coach's standpoint. I'll tell you this, I don't, I don't want to put any kid in a helmet I wouldn't put my son in. Yeah. You know, my boys have played for me, and I know – when, when you coach, you kind of feel that way about all those kids. You know, you want all those kids protected because yeah. they, everybody's hitting. So there's no such thing as a uh, generic cheap helmet. That, that don't exist. Yeah. So, you know, you, you got to buy really the Rydell or Shut. That's that's where the brands are. That's the big companies. And um, and Rydell's really leading the way with that. Yeah. And let me tell you, you, you it's expensive. <laughs> now, yeah. let's talk about the flip side of all it. Right. Every year – with our varsity guys, you, you got to get them helmets reconditioned, which means they come in here like we'll have a Rydell representative. Every helmet reconditioned? Every, every varsity helmet. Okay. Okay. JV's got a call. You can go about every two years with those guys, but every helmet, you, Marshall, you want to do that yeah. from, from a liability standpoint. Just from a, They come in, and they would take all the helmets, and we send them off to the factory, wherever Rydell sends them. And they take every part out, they wash them, they sanitize them. But the main thing, they check for any cracks or anything that would make that helmet defective. Mm-hmm. If they are, if there is, a, and, and let me tell you something, every year you're going to have them. Yeah. You're going to have them. Yeah. We're playing 5A football in South Mississippi. Let me tell you, there's some high-speed impacts that <laughs> you're going to have. The helmets break. Some of those are warranted. Many of those are not. Yeah. Um, and when you, when you send them back and they're not, up to par, they they stamp they reject. Matter of fact, you just get an empty shell back. They, I mean, it's rejected. You, they, you can't use that anymore. You know, it's a stamp on it. You can't put a kid in a rejected helmet. Yeah, yeah. And um, and another thing, every ten years, helmets run out of what we call you. A helmet has a ten year usable life. 
after 10 years and they have a sticker on them and you can't peel them babies off because it's not like you're going to try to cheat and take the stickers off. It's almost infused into them, you know what I'm saying? So it has an initial season and it says that. So anything right now that's got an initial season before 2012, it can't be used. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So you're, you're, you want to order new ones every year. You want to have ones to come in because every year you're going to lose 10 to 15. We lost a lot more this year. But that's something you have to maintain and plan for and stay on top of. Yeah. So every year you're buying new helmets because you know every year you're going to lose helmets. Yeah. You know, helmets that uh, we knew back in the glory days that when we were here playing, we, we can't use them now. You know, that's yeah. just they, – they get they get out of warranty. They get out of date. And uh, – I think of it like milk. You know, it can't last but so long. You know, they don't they don't last much longer. Yeah, it seems like, and that's the highest cost that yeah. we have to spend on on a young man. The helmets. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, that's that's what you know. Usually, the first thing to the fight. That's right. That's right. <laughs> so, you know, after that, um, you know, go from go to your shoulder pads, and when you go with your shoulder pads, they they can be anywhere from, man, they they range. You can get a good pair, Marshall, for for two fifty. That they, Marshall, there's some up three fifty, four hundred dollars. Some some of the better ones. So, your shoulder pads, they they do have a big range. Depends on if it's a line. You know, they're just they're specific now. You know, used to. I mean, when I played, I was just glad to get a pair of pads. Yeah. You know, <laughs> now they're they're lightweight. They're made with this breathable material. I mean, is it a lineman pad or a back pad? You know, back in the day, we didn't know if it was a lineman pad or back pad. You can put a pad on. Shoulder you know, pad. Do, do, they shoulder have a, pad. do they have <laughs> Do they have a life? Do they have to be refurbished? Do they have to be evaluated like a helmet, or they just no? Really they fall don't. Apart? Well, yeah, they, and they and they'll fall apart quickly. Yeah. Um, no, they, don't, they we don't really don't refurbish them. You know, there's some parts if some parts wear out and uh, buckles rust, and I, you can send those back and, and back, and they can fix those. But they they're not under the scrutiny of a helmet. Thing What's a last man on a shoulder pad? Do you Ooh. think? I'm hitting you out of the dark on that. Yeah, one. I you know you can get a a, a good probably. 15 years out of a shoulder okay. pad but now okay. you know you want to replace and, and get better because it's like anything Marshall technology is increasing and, and changing and, and that all that technology that's all passed down to your shoulder pads and you know they make them lighter and stronger just like the helmets everything's trying to go lighter and stronger yeah. and, and all that kind of thing but um Coach, let me stop you for just a All minute. Right. We, we've gotten ourselves through our shoulder pads. Let's take a break to hear from our sponsors, and, and, and Coach Hank is now going to be right back after this word. Step into the extreme, extreme guns that is, located at 711 Station Street in Waynesboro. You'll find the extreme with the area's only authorized Benelli dealer and the area's only Browning Master dealer. When we say extreme, we mean it, as we have the largest local selection of firearms. If optics is your game, Extreme Guns is an authorized dealer for Vortex Optics, along with thermal and night vision scopes in stock. In addition to firearms, optics, and ammunition, Extreme has all of your bow hunting accessories, and we can even repair your cell phone while you look around. Step into and experience the extreme. You'll be glad you did. Extreme Guns, located at 711 Station Street in Waynesboro. When you come out to eat with us at Boondock Eddie's, we care. We care about providing you with a pleasurable dining experience that you deserve and will be happy with. We care about the quality of food we prepare for and serve to you. We care about the service we provide if you're dining in or taking out. We care about providing you the best food you can find anywhere. At Boondock Eddie's, we put our hearts into what we prepare for you because we care. Come out to Boondock Eddie's and see for yourself. If you're looking for a pleasurable dining experience, we make it happen for you because at Boondock Eddie's, we care about you. So much to do and so little time. Get it all done and do it right with Circle C Tractor. Steel products like trimmers, blowers, chainsaws, and accessories. Generate generators that are quieter than a Honda. There's only one place to go and get it all done, and that's Circle C Tractor. Located 1510 Azalea Drive. Open Monday through Friday, 7 until 5 and 8 until noon on Saturday. Locally owned and operated. Call 601-735-3103. When it comes to insurance, one size does not fit all. At Alpha, our friendly hometown team will steer you in the right direction toward the protection you need at a price you can afford. We offer a variety of discounts for a variety of reasons, from your car's safety features to your history of safe driving. Call Alpha agent Mark Gordon at 735-1186. 
Drive away with savings today at Alpha Insurance. Welcome back, everybody. And, and Coach, I just can't say this enough about our sponsors. We sure do appreciate Absolutely. them. And we want to encourage you, you know, to let our sponsors know, you know, that you appreciate what they do to to help promote, you know, Wayne County High School Warrior football. Okay, Coach, we got a helmet, we got some shoulder pads, and we've already spent uh, – a pretty good bunch of money. Well, now, now, what's, money. <laughs> now yeah. what's up next? Well, you got – so, Marshall, you got two – got two entities you want to look at before we get into thigh pads and knee pads and, and your girdles. That, that's easy. That's your pads for your lower body. But, you know, you got you got your jerseys now, okay? You got your, your game jersey and you got your practice jersey. All right, so you're looking at your game jersey. Marshall, where, where the cost is, it, it's a great figure because we've, we've priced some jerseys now. Um, I'm just going to use that. Some are higher, some are lower, but you're looking for a, a, a game pair of pants, a jersey and a pair of pants. You're looking at $100 a piece. As a set or a, the jersey is 100 and the pants I mean, are 100 Jersey 100, pants are 100 oh, for okay. your game gear. That And, look, that's – you may find some for 88. You may find some for 112. It depends, you know, what, what you go with mm -hmm. and what branding you get. You know, your Nike, your Under Armour, and that, that's basically your, your two big vendors. You know, back in the day, I think, remember, we all used to use the Russell team gear. Yeah. That was always some good gear, but Russell's out of the team, the team sales right now. So that's what you're looking at for a brand-new pair of, uh, you know, Nike, Under Armour pants. You're looking at $100 a pair of pants. Now, like I said, more or less, that's a great average. Right. But but what you got to understand, you got to have practice pants, and you got to have practice jerseys that that, that you wear. Got to do it again. Yeah, you got to do it again. Yeah. <laughs> now they're not as expensive, and um, they they cost a little less, but there's still cost involved with that. Yeah. And uh, what we're doing now, we we've got some old game pants here that we're using as our practice pants. Yeah. And that's going to save us some money right now. Yeah. And um, but. After after you get your, your your gear like that, I said mentioned you got your girdles. That's that's what contains your hip pads, and now they got a marshal. You can get a five pass. Seven. You got your basically your hip pads and thigh pads in your girdles. Now you don't have to, but some put them in their pants. Some most buyers have them in the girdle. So yeah. you're looking at thirty plus dollars a girdle, and you know and then you got your knee pads. So you got all these before you even get to your socks and shoes. You got all your other pads. You know yeah. your girdle and all that stuff. So. Let me ask you this: We talk about this girdle pads. We see, I see a lot of kids, a lot of p players now. They, you know, they roll. They don't use knee pads. They roll their pants up over their knees. And I'm talking. I'm not talking about necessarily here, but I mean, you know, and and and, and seems like you know the outside they don't they don't look like they even wear girdle pads anymore. What is required? Are they are they required right. to have girdle pads? Right, let on? me. Yeah, yeah. Well, I don't care how you do it. They're required to have. Pads that protect the hip and butt area. Okay. And we answer that question every day, every every night before a game. Are your guys legally equipped, you know, based on the <laughs> National Federation of High School Rules? Yeah. And, and of course we are. Um, one big point of emphasis, um, I know before I got here in Alabama, Marshall, it was the knee pad thing. You know, they see it from the college and NFL yeah. level. You know, they always, you know, guys are pulling their knee pads up above their knees, yeah. which beyond, is beyond me. Why in the world would you do that, you know? <laughs> um, so, so we – continuously strive to keep our guy you know we, you want to push your knee pads over your patella that protect your kneecap yeah, you know yeah. and not up on your thigh because you got thigh pads for that they'll get them all out of whack if you let them but um <laughs> you know i guess guys i don't know if that maybe at the upper levels the nfl and college they, they don't want nothing on their knees I, I don't see how they do it even take it um, yeah but you you got to have knee pads you got to you got to have knee pads you got to have thigh pads you got to have your hip pads and you got to have your butt pad okay you that that's no you can't go out there without them, Marshall. Yeah. You got to have them. They're they're required. They're legal required equipment. No, I so, get you. I get you. You know we're gonna have them and we're gonna have them prepared and we're gonna have them with, with good stuff on. There um, you go. You know and of course you end up down there with your socks and your cleats. You know and cleats, Marshall. Golly, they're they can be anywhere for you know. You've seen how much tennis shoes cost. Oh my goodness. Yeah. Cleats, cleats are. I mean they're they're outrageous. You. 
hundred, hundred and twenty dollars, you know. You know, I saw some of that and I was surprised really. I was surprised they were that cheap. Yeah. What you're talking about tennis shoes cost today. I got a pair mm -hmm. of new balances on right here and I, I mean I ain't gonna tell you what they cost. Yeah. But I mean, you know, the these shoes I guess I, I was surprised that you could get a good pair of shoes nice. for, for hundred and fifty dollars. Yeah, right. Well thank goodness you get a team you usually get a team ah, there you go. discount with that when you're buying that volume of shoes. Yeah. But uh Man, that those those are tough. Now, and like I said, you can get on some. You might catch, you know, Nike run a special for eighty eight or eighty dollars, but it's it's not yeah. not very likely that you catch them a lot. Now, do you keep these shoes in the program, or do these shoes kind of player specific? Well, no, you keep them in the program, and uh, man, what our game shoes are this year will be our practice shoes next year. Yeah. So you kind of try to recycle. Okay. Well, on you a miss, yearly basis. Yeah, you shoes? try that, but okay. what? what you know, what, you're dealing with children now. Yeah. And you know, I don't they know. If it's been a while for you, but now, let me tell you, them jokers change the shoe size. Like, like I ain't never seen now. They, they might be a nine one year. Next time you know it, they hit a growth spurt and they're 11 and a half. Yeah, so, we're looking for them 11 and a half. Yeah. So sometimes that does work. Sometimes it doesn't work. But yeah. we try to find them cleats. And, um, of course, they sometimes buy their own practice cleats and things like that. But um, that's pretty much just getting the guy on the field. Yeah. That's getting it on the field, and that that's cost involved. That we ain't even got to the cost of football shit. You're gonna be amazed with this one. Well, we gotta have those. Gotta have. You can't play without it, can you? <laughs> well, what's a football cost? Coach? You're looking per football because I just bought some, Marshall. They're around a hundred dollars a piece. You're looking at over ninety bucks when you get shipping and all that involved. You're you're, you're getting a hundred dollar football. Put your stamp and logo on it, that costs a little more, too. Um, that's been one of the biggest cost jumps I've seen in equipment in a long time, just the cost of footballs. Yeah. I think How there's long a reason the football for last it. for you? Well, it, you know what? It, it really depends on the weather. We try to take good care of ours, but you get a good rainy practice and a good rainy day, and you get those pig skins soaking wet, or you play at, at Laurel and it's been a wetty, kind of muddy. Marshall, one night can ruin those suckers. Yeah. They can ruin them. And, of course, you use them. Of course, you'll have them as used, you know, for practice balls and, and all that. But, man, once they get wet and heavy, you can rub them up and dry them. And Coach Moore's in charge of our balls here. He, Man, he keeps them things dried. Mm -hmm. And he rubs the he – got, he's got a little brush that try to keep the, the little bit – there's little bitty rays yeah. and pieces of leather. He, he tries to keep them in good shape. But, Marshall, that depends on the weather, man. And you can – you can go a while with a good ball if you're blessed with good weather, or or you can go and and we may play Popperville May 20th on on a rainy spring, and let me tell you we may we may ruin four good footballs. Yeah. I mean it, it can happen. It, it depends on you know what you what what the field turf's like, what the conditions like, and it depends how much rain you get on them jokers. Yeah. I, you know they're leather yeah. and they absorb water. And let me tell you them jokers, especially during a game. If you get out there and you're on a rainy or, or a wet kind of muddy field, the field's holding water, yeah. them things, are, they feel like they're, they weigh 25 pounds they get you're trying heavy. to carry and throw in. Yeah. They get heavy in a heartbeat. So, you know, cold weather, you, so you're really under your elements there when you yeah. ball. We try to, you know, take good care of ours, but yeah. that's just a cost you got to have. And, you know, you, you, you can't go out there without them, that's for yeah. sure. Yeah. Well, we got we got the ball to play with. We suited up. We ready to go. And we're looking at what a thousand. We're looking at around a thousand dollars in the course. Now we hadn't even bought any tape or mouthpieces Ooh. or food. Now I heard you. <laughs> you got to feed these kids. You want to feed them? Well, yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> yeah. And so that's something else that you you have to incorporate in. Now, did I hear? Did I hear during season? Now I may have dreamed this number: a thousand dollars a week. To feed the kids? That's that's pretty close. Sometimes a little less. We got some great people here that helps us with our what you got usually and this is standard for most places, you got a pregame meal, you feed mm -hmm. them on Friday before the game. Because let me tell you, teenage boys get hungry and they, and they they eat and they burn a lot of calories and you need to feed them guys. You know, last thing in the world you want one of your players going out there and, and you know, we're worrying about why is he not doing his assignment or missing plays. Well a kid can't go out there and perform if he's hungry. You gotta have some energy, you man. You know, you gotta have some energy. Yeah. You can't be hungry playing. So you feed him before and if you got a, a a pretty good away game, you wanna feed him afterwards. You know, yeah. it's like the time everybody gets back here and we we'll take up stuff and they get to their house, you know, it's it's midnight, so you wanna feed them afterwards if if you like I said you got a pretty far away game. Um and, and Marshall, that's that's a huge cost, but that's a cost I'm not willing to ever look over because I want to always feed our guys. And I don't want our players to be be hungry. You know what I'm saying? I want them to have food. And that, 
sometimes I know I know at my house things get busy, and sometimes the only food you eat on a Friday might, is the best meal you get during the week. Yeah. I know it is for me. Yeah. So, you know, I want our guys to be taking care of that, and that's that gets your 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 costs are pretty pretty much dead on with that. Now, one thing else I want to address on the cost of the game here, and uh, technology. You know, mm-hmm. man, I can remember life before a cell phone. And now I can't function without one. That's now. right. So technology's got a cost, and I mean, how much technology do you use? And you you've addressed this, you know, and you know, with the huddle stuff and mm-hmm. the stuff that you're doing that's available to you in the way you can study films now a little bit in the past. But we mm-hmm. hadn't talked about the cost of it. What type of technology do you need? Does a program like this need? And and what does that cost on an annual basis? All right, you. That's a good point. People overlook that. You're looking at about twenty five hundred dollars, give or take, technology. Mm-hmm. Um, now that's if you don't have. To, that's if we can go out there right now as is. Mm-hmm. You don't have to buy a camera. You don't have to buy an iPad. That you can go out there as is right now, um, Marshall. But but pretty much every coach in America is pretty much on the huddle system now, and that's that's a that's basically an online film swapping and sharing and viewing platform that mm. it's, it's really neat i remember you know it don't seem like too long ago i was making i'd have 10 vcr stacked up in my office and i'd make you know as many copies you can make off the vcr tapes to give to kids now they got the huddle they got the film on their phone you know it's yeah. kind of neat where technology is gone with that but that has a cost too you know and that's not cheap, and that's that's what everybody and what you know. If you're not on Huddle Trading Fam, you're you're on another brand, and it's you've got to be on something to trade fam with, you know. So that's the cost that you say. Oh well, you can save there. You 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 can't save there. It's kind of like footballs. You got to have it. If yeah. you're going to watch film, if you're going to view film, and we're going to correct our mistakes, and and we we're big on film watching here within the program. Yeah, you know, and uh, man, you got to have your film watching. Media, you know, you got to have that. Let me. You, I'm gonna go back, and you said something. You said something on the phone. Do do <clears throat> do do your players have access to? Everybody's got cell phones now, pretty sure, much. Sure, pretty much. Do they have access to this on their cell phone? Yes, sir. They so they can do. study film 24 hours a day. They, there should be no excuse, Marshall, for them not being prepared from watching film. They can get it on their phone. They can get it on their iPad. The only time it would hinder a player, and I've had this happen before, the only time this hinders a player is where they don't have access to Internet. Okay. When they don't have Internet access, it pretty much shuts their film viewing down. But when they got – and, Marshall, that, there are places like that, okay? There are places here in Wayne County like that. Oh, yeah. Okay? Yeah. But for the most part, the vast majority, they do have Internet access and they can watch film. Yeah. Uh, man, that's uh, this. It's not the game I grew up playing. It's a little bit different, but it's well, still it's, it's bigger and faster for doggone sure. <laughs> let me tell you, I, you're right, and yeah. it's still who can put their hand in the dirt and come out and hit them in the mouth and make great tackles. So, we still you, got a block and tackle. Now you just said something. And we're gonna no, we're not gonna talk anymore about the cost of the game today. I think we've pretty much summarized that pretty good, and people can understand. And you know, the Wayne County School District has done a great job with the facilities that they've provided here, and we're thankful for that. Absolutely. And uh, let you me know, tell you, our central office for us since I've been here has been a backbone. Yeah. To, to help us get the things we need, not luxuries, get yeah. the things we have to have. Yeah. So they they've been a great they've been a great asset for yeah. us. Now, in a quick closure here, uh, you, you said something before we got started today. Uh, you've got your eighth graders together this week for the first time. We got to start. Let me tell you, I'm excited. I, I, you know, during this time, this, and I've told our team, this is probably the worst time for football season because they're, about, they, they're starting to get a little sunny, starting to get a little warm. Everybody wants to be outside. They don't want to be in here doing the grind anymore. <laughs> and you kind of get to where – you just get kind of in a little bit of a lull. And this time, it happens everywhere. It's yeah. not unique to Wayne County. But it has been a joy to get outside with our eighth graders, you know, just doing the spring training. We, you know, I think I got hired a little. By the time I could get started last year, March 1st, and, and our staff wasn't really put together, we really couldn't do this last year, especially on the, on the, on the heels of the COVID stuff going on. And, let me tell you, I'm glad to be able to get to do that this year with our guys and our staff, and it's fun. Those guys, our eighth graders we have, let me tell you something, 
They are a physical bunch of guys. I can't wait to see them grow up and get stronger. They, it's like sticking your hand in a beehive. Man. They, they don't mind peppering you. You hear me? So I can't wait to see these guys grow and mature. But uh, we've had some good physical work, and I'm, I've been pleased with this bunch so far. Yeah. Well, we're excited about that, Coach. We're excited about the future of Wayne County High School War Eagle football. But the old horn's blowing, son, and we got to go. Where's our time going, Man, Marshall? it flies. It flies, don't it? Uh, yeah, but I tell you what, uh, we'll get together and do it again. We appreciate you right. taking time and making and helping helping us all, myself and our listeners, you know, get a good grasp on what it takes to run a, a successful football program, and that's what we got here at yes, Wayne sir. County. But for now, uh, Coach Jack Hankins, uh, myself, Marshall Wood, uh, Wayne County High School War Eagle football, we out. Step into the extreme, extreme guns that is, located at 711 Station Street in Waynesboro. You'll find the extreme with the area's only authorized Benelli dealer and the area's only Browning Master dealer. When we say extreme, we mean it, as we have the largest local selection of firearms. If optics is your game, Extreme Guns is an authorized dealer for Vortex Optics, along with thermal and night vision scopes in stock. In addition to firearms, optics, and ammunition, Extreme has all of your bow hunting accessories, and we can even repair your cell phone while you look around. Step into and experience the extreme. You'll be glad you did. Extreme Guns, located 711 Station Street in Waynesboro. When you come out to eat with us at Boondock Eddie's, we care. We care about providing you with a pleasurable dining experience that you deserve and will be happy with. We care about the quality of food we prepare for and serve to you. We care about the service we provide if you're dining in or taking out. We care about providing you with the best food you can find anywhere. At Boondock Eddie's, we put our hearts into what we prepare for you because we care. Come out to Boondock Eddie's and see for yourself. If you're looking for a pleasurable dining experience, we make it happen for you because at Boondock Eddie's, we care about you. So much to do and so little time. Get it all done and do it right with Circle C Tractor. Steel products like trimmers, blowers, chainsaws, and accessories. Generac generators that are quieter than a Honda. There's only one place to go and get it all done, and that's Circle C Tractor. Located at 1510 Azalea Drive. Open Monday through Friday, 7 until 5 and 8 until noon on Saturday. Locally owned and operated. Call 601-735-3103. When it comes to insurance, one size does not fit all. At Alpha, our friendly hometown team will steer you in the right direction toward the protection you need at a price you can afford. We offer a variety of discounts for a variety of reasons, from your car's safety features to your history of safe driving. Call Alpha agent Mark Gordon at 735-1186. Drive away with savings today at Alpha Insurance. Thanks for listening to Wayne County Football Show, brought to you by Extreme Guns, Alpha Insurance, Boondock Eddies, Circle C Tractor, and First State Bank.